It's hard out here. It's hard out here. You know, no. smoking is a leading cause of preventable death. Why are we the target? Why are we the target? Advertising our community to artists with this vaping garbage. Yeah, they tryna take us away, they tryna take us away, they tryna smoke us away until we gone. Yeah, they tryna take us away, they tryna take us away, they tryna smoke us away until we gone. 85% black, menthol smokers, you tell me that. Cause we're being targeted, that's a fact. 8 billion and 2014 on advertisement. Think about it, hmm, we been under attack. Why are we the target? Why are we the target? Right. I, I want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to thank our sponsors, all the local sponsors, all, all our national sponsors, the African American Tobacco Control Leadership Council. I want to also thank our Tobacco Action Group members, as well as the, um, the National Center for Black Health and Equity, Angel Lee, who's done a fabulous job with help planning this event, and also Poet Life as well. This is really a combination of a lot of hard work to educate the community on the harmful effects of menthol tobacco, to also encourage our legislators, our councilmen, to do what's morally right and pass the legislation here in the city of Buffalo to ban menthol tobacco. We know that menthol tobacco destroy lives, and this really is all about saving black lives. Black lives matter. Black excellence was on, on, on display here tonight. So I also want to thank my, my good friend Sherman Webb who came out here and did the video photography for us so that we can have a footprint of the wonderful things that are happening um, here in our city and what's happening or what's to come. Thank you so much, y'all. Stand the man. My name is Christoph Jenkins. I'm the founder and creator of The Poet Life, but I'm also the creative strategist of the African American Tobacco Control Leadership Council. I'm from the DMV, and I'm out here in Buffalo, New York. And listen when I tell you, the creativity, the content, the artists, the poetry, the community out here is absolutely amazing. It's like none other. I'm so glad I made the flight and I just had an awesome time tonight. The people learned through poetry, they were inspired, and I can't wait to, do, to redo something amazing like this again. All right, I'm out of here. Christoph Jenkins is the Poet Life. I appreciate y'all. First of all, I would like to thank everybody for coming out tonight for the 716 Poetry Mix. My name is Lisa Brown, AKA Angel Lee, exclusively by Angel Lee. We are here in this community, the 716, to let you know that we need to do something about nicotine. Thank you, thank everybody. Keep working for my man Stan, and I wanna say good night to all. Hey, my name is Latoya Shanae. I'm with BDA, Business Design and Advancement. I love the 716 Poetry Mix today. It was awesome to bring Stan Consulting out, learn more about tobacco awareness, as well as Christoph Jenkins, and learn about the opportunities for poets and how they can make a business out of their poetry businesses. Exclusively, Angeli actually made my hat as well, so it was very good to see her out here as well, and I'm very glad to be a part of this event. Y'all know what it is, and y'all know what it do. This your girl, Goodness, and I'm out here on location, location, location. Y'all know where I be at. I be everywhere but last year. And I'm out here at the 716 Mix Poetry Slam Black History event. And we're down here at the Michigan Street Baptist African American Heritage Corridor. And I just came out of the slam, $500 Grand Slam. Thank you. And I appreciate everybody who cast their votes for me. I thought I was gonna come home with that Grand Slam, the real grand prize, but any prize is better than no prize as long as you keep your eyes on the prize. Get on. Get on. Buffalo Zone, baby. Oh my goodness. Get on. Ciao. Um, so I'm Skyler. I'm Michelle Lawson. And uh, this is our first time going to this type of event. You know, we, we thought it was really inspiring, and um, I don't know, it just, it just really, it's just really, really um, a good way of inspiring people to get passionate about tobacco control and ending, um, trying to end the impact that menthols has in the black community. So you know, I'd love to see more of these events happen throughout the country. And I think that poetry. Particularly spoken word has the power to inspire people to, to you know, get involved in social activist movements like, like banning menthol and the flavor tobacco products that have a really big public health impact. Yeah, this was such a vibe. Like, seriously, this 
just seeing everyone in the community just come together and you know and celebrate and use spoken word and art to really get the message to people that you know like tobacco is affecting everyone you know and it's just crazy how it's affecting so many people in our community and I want to get that awareness out so that's why we're part of the tobacco action group so yeah and I want to see more like this so this was great I loved it the food the music the people everything I think, I think, I think the main thing is that I love I love that this is doing it's doing what the tobacco industry has done, but in a good way. So historically, the tobacco industry has used our culture to sell their products, to sell yep. products to our communities. Yep. This type of activity is using our culture to promote health, to promote yep. you know, well-being, yep. and, and to push back against the tobacco industry. It's a misappropriation of our culture. Reclaiming our culture and using it to help people you know, break from addiction, as well as just end the scourge that tobacco has had on the black community. Yep. Peace, what up? Cash Green, AKA Jay Hawkins. Chantel Lynette, the brown bag lady. Word up, word up. And we just got done rocking out at the 716 Poetry Jam, you know, right here in the Michigan Corridor and um, linking up with Poetry Life and just a real dope event, man. Um, event with purpose, a lot of uh, touchy subject everybody can relate to, everybody did some great work too, great poetry and really just a dope vibe, man. Black people gathered, looking good, feeling right, good. Feeling good, eating good. Yeah, yeah, that part. That Angel part. Lee pulled me back in my poetry bag. I've been on hiatus for a minute, so definitely felt good to put pen to paper again or, you know, thumb the screen and then create some art. Word, shout out to Angel Lee, you know what I mean? Super creative, got the art, hostess, put everything together and link up with some people that, you know what I mean? Just bringing something different to the town, bringing that knowledge and, and getting people together. A chance to showcase their talent and compensate the artists, which is always love, always peace. So we just happy to be a part of it, man. Word up. Stay tapped in. Follow the Friday Night Cypher on Instagram and Facebook. You heard? Right, and if you want to tap in for all things black owned, be on the lookout for volume 8, dropping Juneteenth of that brown bag. Grab volume 7 now. Yeah. We're going to be servicing Central New York, Western New York, and the GTA, Greater Toronto Area. So tap in. It's currency for the culture, y'all. Don't you got copies right here at the site we at? They're actually in the gift shop. Hey, right here in the gift shop. So where, where we at right now? We're down here right now in the uh, main office of the Michigan Street African Heritage Corridor. So come on down and grab you a copy too. Real life history right here in Buffalo. And we just made some more history during black history. Talk that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, I'm Bianca LP here, my bro. I'm out here. We had a poetry slam. Bring awareness to the type of things that's going on with big tobacco in the black community, Sam. The bread is good. But what's not good is the way they target our youth in the black community. So I want to make sure I say that. I came in third place, y'all. I'm feeling good. This is a great event. Hopefully I can share my work with y'all at another time. But you know what? Big Tobacco Focus is they be trying to make sure that they really are advertising to our youth and our black communities and our LGBTQ um, children. And we really got to stop that, you know? We ain't trying to shun none of y'all that smoke. But at the same time, remember, the healthcare system is a part of this. The way they treat us, if you won't take that poison, remember, they don't even treat you fair there. So you got to watch out, bro. Uh, my name is Eric Brown. I'm out of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I deal with human trafficking, gang prevention. I deal with a lot of kids that that smoke. Started from the age 10 on up. Um, I deal with a lot of stress relief. They use cigarettes for a stress relief. Uh, necessarily, they get. It's like a, a generation curse, like start from the grandparents to the mothers to the kids. It's a constant situation where it's so, like a cycle that never can be broke. Uh, besides dealing with murders down there, uh, cigarettes, drugs, and pills like the main culprits of what I deal with in my city. This cigarette thing is like something that's like close to my heart because my dad died of lung cancer. Uh, that's something that's, that runs in my family. So, cigarettes has definitely took a lot of people from me in my life. So, this program was something that was good 
my wife can't win, uh, but like I said, this was a good program for everybody to learn about the fact. They made zombies out of black youth who thought smoking was cool because RJ and Morris made it look so smooth. And this is a children's story, a cautionary tale. Tobacco ain't nothing but legal crack. And once started, hard to step back. I wonder what vaping will bring. Probably more of the same thing. Their generational wealth sealed our generational health, but we still roll it up, light it up, inhale. Roll it up, light it up. Inhale. Now watch your health fail.